Today we're going to talk about one of the most powerful counting strategies. I call it constructive counting. The way it works is this. You think about how to construct just one of what you're trying to count. And while you're thinking about making just one of the things you're trying to count, you figure out how to count all of them. Let's see how it works on this problem. We have a set with six numbers and we want to count the number of ways we can order the six numbers in this set so that A comes before B whenever A is a divisor of B. Now we must be using the word before a little loosely here because, well, 12 is a divisor of 12, but 12 can't come before 12. But, eh, you know what we mean by before and divisor here. Let's go ahead and try to build one of these orderings. Well, we'll start at the beginning. What number comes first? We look at these numbers and we see that 1 is a divisor of everything else in the list. So 1 comes before these other numbers because 1 is always a divisor of all those other numbers. So we know what number comes first. 1 comes first. Well, that might make us think, well, what's at the other end? Well, 12 is a multiple of everything in this list. 12 is a multiple of everything in this list, so everything in this list has to come before 12. So 12 is at the other end. And now we just have to figure out how to count the ways to put the other four numbers in the middle. Now we could list out all the possibilities and then check them. That doesn't sound like fun. So instead, let's think about, well, how will we make this list? Well, let's start with what's next, the second number in the list. Well, what could come second? Well, let's see, I, I can't put the four next because we know that 2 has to come before 4, because 2 is a divisor of 4. So 4 can't be next. 6 can't be next either, because the 2 and the 3 have to be before the 6. So the only numbers that could be next are 2 and 3. So then, well, what if we put 2, uh, put down here, 3. Well, if I put 2 next, what could come after 2? Well, I can't put the 6 after the 2, because the 3 has to be before the 6. So I can't put the 6 next. But I can put the 3 next, and I can put the 4 next. Now if I go 2 and then 3, well now I can put the 6, because you know, all of its divisors, besides itself of course, are already before it. So I can go 2, then 3, then 6. I can also go 2, then 3, then 4, and then we can finish it out in each case. Now if I've gone 2 and then 4, I can't put the 6 next because 3 has to come before the 6. So we have one choice here, 3 and then 6. All right, let's start down here. And those are the only cases that start with 2. Let's think about 3. What can come after the 3? can't put the 6 next because the 2 has to come before the 6. I certainly can put the 2 next. And I can't put the 4 next either. Because the 2 has to come before the 4. So my only option is to go 3 and then 2. Then I have two options. I can put the 4 next or the 6 next. I'm going to go 6 after the 4. Or the 4 after the 6. And there we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We've counted 5 possible orderings. And the key strategy there was just thinking about how to make one. And then we saw how to make all of them. All right, let's try this strategy again. In some languages, every consonant must be followed by a vowel. How many seven-letter words, so-called words, can we make from the Hawaiian word makala if each consonant must be followed by a vowel? All right, well, how can we make one of these words? I mean, yeah, we've got one sitting right there, but let's think about, well, we're going to try to create a word with these letters that follow these rules. Every consonant must be followed by a vowel. Well, that means, well, whenever I write down an M, I've got to put an A right after it. So I'm just going to staple an A right there. Whenever I write a K, I've got to put an A right after it. It's the only vowel I have. Damn, it goes right there. And whenever I put an L, I'll have to put an A, just like that. So if I'm going to make one of these words, I'm going to figure out where the M goes, staple an A right after it, figure out where the K goes, A right after it, where the L goes, A goes right after that. And then I just have to stick the extra A in somewhere. So to make one of these words, all I have to do is, well, I have to pick an order for these three things and then put an A in one of these slots. So let's do that first. I'm going to figure out what order the M, the K, and the L come in. And I kind of like this order right here. So I like to put the, the 
the MA first. You know, you got to put the MA first because MA, that's Massachusetts, and they're the national champs right now. So they're first. All right, and I like to put the LA last. I live in San Diego. LA is Los Angeles. Got to put Los Angeles last. So LA is all the way back here. I'm going to put K in the middle. You know, just like that original order I had up there. I like this order. Of course, that's not the only order we could have done this in. All right, we got these three different things. We can order them in three times two times one. That's three factorial ways. So I have three factorial orderings for these three these consonants with the vowel stapled after. And then to make our word, well, I still have that extra A. I can put the A here, 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 or here. I have four choices for where the extra A goes, and each case makes a different word. So for each of our three factorial orderings of ma, ka, and la, I have four choices for where to put the extra A. That gives me four times three factorial, four times six, 24 of these so-called words. Constructive counting wins again. All right, let's try pizza. I like pizza. All right, circular pizza is cut five times with straight line cuts before taking the pizza out of the pan. And we want the maximum number of pieces that can be made, which contain none of the pizza's outer crust. So, well, I guess those are the yummy pieces, the ones with no crust. This must be a pretty bad pizza if the crust is no good. But, well, let's, again, start with our constructive counting. We'll draw our pizza's big circle. That's our pizza. And we're going to cut it. Five straight line cuts. Boom, boom, boom. And think about how we can make the maximum number of these yummy pieces, these pieces with no cut, with no crust. All right, so we'll start with the first cut. Well, that's easy. No yummy pieces, right? It's just going to cut it in two pieces, and of course they have crust. All right, so we want our next cut. All right, we got two cuts, no yummy pieces. That's, that's no good. That's no good at all. All right, our next cut. Well, we can make a yummy piece on the next cut. We come like this. And we've got a yummy piece right in the middle there. Yummy piece, no crust at all. Well, what about our next cut? How can we make our next cut in a way that's going to make as many yummy pieces as we can possibly make? Well, where do we actually get yummy pieces from? Well, let's go ahead and try to draw a cut here and see where the yummy pieces come from. Start drawing from up here. And I'm drawing, I'm drawing, drawing, and I hit one of my other cuts. But, you know, these big open space out here. I'm just going to make two more yucky pieces. You know, I have one big yucky piece. Now I have two young, two smaller yucky pieces. And when I keep going, I keep going, and I hit another line. I hit another line in some of my pizza here. And I split this big yucky piece into a yummy piece and a yucky piece. That's interesting. And I keep on going, keep on going. And I hit another line again. I hit another line again. And again, I take what was a big yucky piece, and I split it into a yummy piece and a yucky piece. So I got another yummy piece right there. And then I continue on out, and I'm not going to make any more yummy pieces out there. Well, I have one more line to draw. How am I going to get one more line to get as many yummy pieces as I possibly can? Well, let's look back what happened with that, that fourth line and think about when did we make yummy pieces? Well, when we first were drawing, drawing, nothing was happening. Then we hit the line, we made a yucky into two yucky pieces. Then when I go from one line to another, as long as I'm staying inside the pizza here, as I go from one line to another, I'm always going to make a new yummy piece. I'm always going to make this new yummy piece right there. This piece out here is going to be yucky, but there was one yucky before. Now I have one yucky and one yummy. I made a new yummy piece. And then I keep going. As I go from one line to another line, I make another yummy piece right there. So what I want to do when I draw this fifth line, well, every time I go from one line to another, I think I'm going to make another yummy piece. Now when I draw this, I can only go from one line to another three times. There are only four lines in, out there, and when I hit the first line, well, nothing's going to happen. But I think I'm going to make a yummy piece when I go here, yummy piece when I go here, another yummy piece when I go here. So three times I'm going to go from one line to another. I expect to make three more yummy pieces. Let's check it out. So I'm going to bring my last cut right through here. I hit the first line, nothing going on there. When I go from the first line to the second, I take my yum, my one yummy piece here and I turn it into two yummy pieces. I get a new yummy piece, just like I planned. 
Now as I go from this line to this line out here, go from one line to another, I take this big yucky region, I turn it into one yucky plus one yummy, I made another yummy piece. And then I go from here, from this line to the next line, and once again I take one yummy slice and I turn it into two yummy slices as I go from one line to another. So sure enough, we see, using our constructive approach here, that every time we go from one line to another, as we make a new cut, we make a new yummy piece. And we see that our maximum number of yummy pieces is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, it might be a little uncomfortable just sitting here counting away, counting away. Are we sure we didn't miss any regions? Check our answer, think about it real quick, what we're doing here. All right, first cut. First cut doesn't make any yummy pieces, because the way I make yummy pieces is by going from one line to another while I'm drawing. Second cut, no good. Can't make any yummy pieces here, because I make yummy pieces when I go from one line to another as I'm making my cut. My third cut, my third cut goes from one cut to another. Just once, that makes one yummy piece. Now my fourth cut, well I already have three cuts in here, so I expect to go one cut to the second, second cut to the third. I expect to make two more yummy pieces. And sure enough, that's exactly what's going to happen when I make my next. Go from here, hit the first cut, hit the second, make a yummy piece, hit the third, make a yummy piece, and I get two more yummy pieces. And then when I break out my fifth cut, I've already got four cuts there, I expect to go from the first cut to the second, second cut to the third, third cut to the fourth, I expect to make three more yummy pieces. So I'm going to send it right through here. I go hit the first cut, nothing happens, go from the first to the second, I take one yummy and I turn it into two, I make a new yummy piece. Go from this cut, second cut to the third, I make another yummy piece, and then finally I go from the third cut to the fourth, and I make yet one more yummy piece. So sure enough, one, two, three, I made three more yummy pieces. And my constructive counting tells me that there are six yummy pieces of pizza, and I'm going to go eat them.